everyone! My name is Mozart and I'm so excited and honored to be doing this TED Talk. So thank you so much for inviting me to share my experiences about my unique education. I am a global citizen who last year graduated high school at 14 with honors and started college and it's very unusual in the States. I already have an award-winning, budding career in singing, acting, songwriting, and filmmaking, and I'm fluent and literate as a native in Mandarin, Chinese, Spanish, and English, and I also play four instruments, which helps me communicate with the whole world. I was born near San Francisco and spent my first five years living a pretty normal life until my parents decided to sell our home our cars and almost everything we owned so that we could travel around the world non-stop and literally use the world as my classroom. Wow, right? Crazy idea, but it has really worked out well for us. We're pioneers in what people call digital nomads and my family was a case study in the record-breaking book called The 4-Hour Workweek, which was on the New York Times best-selling list for seven years. My mom's blog, which documents our story, Soul Travelers 3, has won many awards, including two Lonely Planet Travel Awards. For the past 10 years, I've traveled to 48 countries on five continents, slowly and thoroughly on a very tiny budget. I've also driven across the USA a few times and seen most US states. I've taken trains, planes, boats, cars, mass transit, bikes, and more, but I've mostly seen the world on a ground level by walking or living like a local. I've stayed in a few fancy hotels, but mostly stayed in furnished rental apartments off season, couch surfed with locals, stayed in hostels, and spent lots of time in our camper van around Europe for six of those years. Kind of like an aristocrat's grand tour for education, but <laughs> done on a low budget modern style. To give you an idea of some of the mind-blowing educational opportunities I've been so lucky to have via my travel life, let me show you a few. Swimming with sharks in Bora Bora, doing a camel overnight trek deep in the Sahara at 6, and riding a camel in Petra Jordan at 10, and another camel at the Great Wall in China at 12 learning to surf in Hawaii, learning archaeology in Pompeii, Ephesus, Troy, Mycenae, Delphi, Palace of Knossos, etc. Truly amazing for a kid like me with a passion for Greek myths and archaeology. Swimming with dolphins in Portugal and also the Florida Keys with marine biologists. Seeing a ballet in Sydney's Opera House and jamming with an Aboriginal native? Or watching Shakespeare at the Globe in London? Or Broadway shows in New York City? Celebrating Chinese New Year at colorful temples in Asia? Or participating in Semana Santa in Spain? Eating reindeer meat in a traditional coda in Sweden? Climbing the famous tiger's nest in Bhutan, playing my violin on a Vienna stage, or guitar in Nashville, or having my acting debut in a Japanese film in Croatia, seeing world-class operas in Verona in an ancient amphitheater, dissecting squid near the Golden Gate Bridge in California at a Johns Hopkins CTY science workshop sailing the turquoise coast in Turkey, or cruising the fjords of Norway, or feeling like time travel back to the Middle Ages walking through the Medina in Fez, Morocco, to name just a few of my adventures growing up global. There is no way I could have had these experiences if we hadn't chosen the travel life, so the benefits made my parents glad they took the risk, and me too. But in many ways, it just seemed like normal life to me. I think it's really hard to travel and not learn. As my mom says, family travel is often about doing ordinary things in extraordinary places. And I think I'm just now beginning to see how lucky I have been, and I so appreciate all that I've seen, my beautiful friends around the world, and so much time with my family. One of the benefits of a travel life is the amount of time you get to spend together, so we're a close team. We even have our own Soul Travelers through cheer. I'm a compulsive book reader and always have been since I taught myself to read it too, and that, with experiences, are the keys to my learning. 
My parents have always followed my lead and exposed me to good things. Because of tech, I was able to keep using my home library as we roamed, and my mom also sent boxes full of great children's books ahead of us by ship before we arrived when I was little, and I'm still a huge fan of real books and libraries. Bookstores and libraries abroad always excited me just as much as the chocolate shops. I've never taken any English, spelling, or grammar classes, but because I've read so much, I've always done well when tested, even though I rarely do take tests. Like at 13, I got a high honors award from Johns Hopkins University CTY for taking the SAT test, which is a must for college here. I got better than 97% of all seniors who take the test at 18 or 19 years old, which is the normal age to take the test. I was the only little kid in this huge room, so it was a bit intimidating, but thankfully it all went well and it allowed me to graduate early. I've mostly homeschooled, but I have dipped in to schools a little for language immersion and social connection to a culture. I went to a local school in a tiny ancient white village in Spain for five months for five winters, and then the other seven months every year we would spend traveling around Europe in our camper. I also went to a local school in Penang, Malaysia and Beijing, China, where I was the only Caucasian in those schools. So I feel like I've gotten the best possible education, and I think I've been so blessed with a much deeper understanding of our planet, our people, and just life itself through my experiences. I have been blessed to see some of the best museums in the world, the most fantastic sites, and have met the most awesome people of every type. I've had tea in a Bedouin tent in Wadi Rum in the Middle East, like Lawrence of Arabia cooking a dinner under the sand. And at 13, I was the youngest reporter at New York Fashion Week, so I got to meet stars like Vogue's iconic editor, Anna Wintour, and tennis star Serena Williams. And I cooked a meal with China's master chef in Shanghai. I've seen the poorest people in our world, and I've done service projects like taking disadvantaged kids from Harlem, traveling with us virtually, and building a school in Guatemala by social media fundraising with Pencils of Promise. And I've also met some of the richest people in every other type in between on our planet, which I think has enriched me for life. Traveling with my piano and violin was probably one of the most challenging aspects, but now we're glad we did that. We added the didgeridoo in Australia and my guitar in Texas. Piano, of course, was the hardest, as it's the least portable, but we kept a full-size digital piano in our camper and bought a cheap one for Asia, and rented sometimes, or found places to practice on the road. I've played violin in every country, which we recorded on video, and my first YouTube video was me doing that in the first 18 countries, and much to our great surprise, it went viral. It's called Where in Heaven is Mozart? This is it. I was only five, and some people thought this was a green screen instead of me actually being there. An award-winning teacher, John Holt, said, There's no difference between living and learning. It's impossible, misleading, and harmful to think of them as being separate. I think everything is learning, so I'm grateful that I got to have so much freedom in my learning. One of the many perks of being a global kid is celebrating cool birthdays abroad. My parents helped me understand what world travel was before we left by planning my sixth birthday in Paris at the Eiffel Tower. They used books like Madeline to help me understand, and we'd use them to make up our own itineraries, finding places in the kids' books. I had my seventh birthday in Salzburg, which loves Mozart, and I stayed in a Queen of the Night room. Eighth birthday in Stockholm, ninth birthday in London, tenth birthday in Barcelona, 11th birthday at Harry Potter's Wizarding World in Orlando, Florida, 12th birthday singing karaoke in Penang, Malaysia, 13th in Sydney, 14th in New York City, 15th in Dallas, Texas, and I just had my 16th birthday on the beach with friends in Santa Monica, California, where we are now based. Hunt has a quote that fits me well. Traveling in the company of those we love is home in motion. I'm an only child and very social, so my parents have set up a slow international traveling method that has us returning to places often with many homes or bases around the world, so I keep long-term friendships in several languages. When we get together online or in person, it always seems like we were never apart. I have two best friends here in LA that I have known since I was a baby, and we just see each other from time to time over the years when I'd be around, and now we're closer than ever. So 
Sir Ken Robinson says, We have sold ourselves into a fast food model of education that's impoverishing our spirits and our energies as much as fast food is depleting our physical bodies. And I agree. Learning is everywhere and travel helps even if you're just traveling on short trips near your home because it opens one's vision to the new. Even in your own town, one can participate in cultural festivals, learn languages, study cultures via books, and explore places and movies. All of you have an advantage, as the UK is filled with many cultures, and your nearby a continent that is filled with different languages and cultures. Studies show that extended travel and learning languages through immersion increases creativity, and we need that in today's world. I think travel has helped my creativity by exposing me to so much. I started writing songs when I was four, and now I have two songs in two movies, and I'm working on my first album. I just got a scholarship to do private study with the head of music composition at the UCLA School of Music. I love to perform, and have played at the House of Blues, Six Flags, Four Seasons Hotels, just to name a few, and recently I've been street performing to make some extra money, and I'm building my own recording studio. My singing and songwriting led me to acting because a casting director saw me perform my song Ashes, which I also play violin on. And she cast me as the dramatic lead in a movie called Rose, where I play a violin prodigy who dies of cancer. I just won a Best Actress Award for that in an international film festival. I've also done some commercials in English and Spanish, going to be on MTV, and just booked a lead in a TV series. I also make my own music videos and have won a bunch of awards for them. So now I'm working on my first documentary film that I'm going to do about my travel life and how that has affected my education, languages, and creativity. Who knows where travel will lead? I wish you all lots of fun, travel, and learning, and thanks again for listening.